Hello, hello everyone and welcome to another Thursday of the Good News for Now. I've been trying to film this episode for about a day and a half and my throat is not the best, so please bear with me because we are not going to let um, a tickled throat stop us from sharing the good news. I hope you found the silver linings in your day-to-day lives, ups or downs, and everything in between. We are tackling some topics that I feel are life principles, you know, and the more we tra- we step into those principles, the easier challenges become. We steward blessings easily and faithfully and with wisdom. And I realized that in the midst of all of life's every day, I live a life that's quite is very prayerful. I pray every single day. I pray with my daughter before she goes to bed. I pray multiple times a day. And then I'm in the word daily because without the word, I feel like I I can't fortify those prayers. But in saying so, and I'm grateful not recently, but sometimes I do feel like how faithful am I really being in my prayers? I sometimes ask myself, do I have the faithful expectation that God will answer all that I've prayed for. And I think there are prayers that I pray that I'm like, this is going to happen without a doubt. And then there's prayers that feel so big and so like, am I being arrogant and cocky? Will this really happen? That maybe I let doubt and allow myself to be too minded Anything that limits me from just trusting fully. And it just caused me to ask the question, am I remaining in faith? Am I truly believing God for the things that I desire most? And... Is that faith backed up in prayer, in obedience, in remaining? Yeah, so I thought we'd discuss this topic of faithful expectation. Are remaining? Are we remaining faithful in our expectations that God's word will accomplish in our lives? And are we truly faithful to the Lord? Do we love him? Do we repent? Do we live a life according to his will? Do we believe he'll accomplish all he has said and planned for us? Answering these questions to ourselves requires honest introspection and dying to human fleshly desire and picking up the cross to follow in the ways of the Lord. Dying of flesh means following the Lord to the ends of the earth not letting emotions, people, circumstances, and daily life move us from standing firm in his will and knowing his heart for us. It's hard work and new muscles are constantly being exercised in this process. And truth be told, scripture says a handful of us get to be a part of the body of Christ, not only, not All Christians are part of the body of Christ. Part of being in it is surrendering all, trusting always, believing. And when you're not, bringing it back to him, submitting and saying, you know what, Lord, I've been feeling too minded and I know that doesn't come from you. Holy Spirit, help me. Whatever desires of in my flesh that make me make you smaller than what you truly are in my life, Lord, kill those desires like remove them with immediate effect so that i can be strong and greater in your spirit lord and i think not only prayer helps that but fasting where you have to really center yourself and acknowledge the will of god of your life and really be praying and seeking him can help strengthen the holy ghost within you and again, it's a process. It's exercising muscles, exercising your spirit to grow, you know, exercising your obedience, your discipline, your self-control, you know. Um, 
The question is, really, are we going to be a part of eternity and walk and live in the kingdom one day? Will he say, well done, my good and faithful servant? Or will he say, he doesn't recognize us? And I think the same commitment we put into our daily lives, like, I'm committed to being a good person in society, doing my very best. We have to put that commitment into our walk with God, irrespective of being in the world. You have to be committed to what God thinks about you and how you know him and how you're seeking and trying to make a relationship that is forever with him. And it requires effort on your side. It's not just because you're salvation has given you freedom that freedom comes with work you know to keep it because you're also supposed to free others god is always available he is the highest caliber of gentlemen he is always with you he will never forsake you irrespective of how many times you get it wrong he searches your heart he believes in you he made you there is nothing you could do that would make him leave you in chronicles it says two chronicles 6 4 reads as praise the lord the god of israel who kept his promise he made to my father david this is solomon speaking after he finished the temple that david had started and remember david builds this temple and then god says you've done a good thing to do this temple this house for me but it's not you who will complete it your son will and Solomon does. And his prayer becomes, oh, he prays, O oh Lord God of Israel, there is no one like you in heaven and earth. You keep your covenant and show unfailing love to all who walk before you with wholehearted devotion. You have kept your promise to your save servant David, my father. You made that with your own mouth and with your own hands, you have fulfilled it today. And that is, you know, when I'm saying faithful expectation, it's truly that. Like, do we believe that in the end, after we've done it all, even if it was before our time, those big things that seem like the impossible task will come to pass because he's made covenant with us. He's faithful unto us. He, his love is unfailing to us. He will fulfill all his promises. And I know in the whispers that you hear at night after your prayer, like, you know in your heart of hearts, he will answer you. And it's the human brain that then goes, oh, why would I hear that? Who's talking to me? Instead of being like, yes, Lord, thank you that I've heard that. Holy Spirit, thank you for a gift of hearing my God speak to me and say he will. So I'm going to stand firm in that even when the world says no. You know? It's faithful expectation requires literally letting go of what you want and wanting what God wants for you. And then when you hear the thing God wants for you, truly believing that it's possible because he said it and he would never say a word that would come back incomplete or unaccomplished and knowing him well enough to know that about him. Let the knowing of God, who God is according to his word, Act as it's meant to, final, so you can stand firm and not be moved. And then you understand the importance of arming yourself daily, placing the armor of God on each morning. That salvation, that righteousness, that belt of truth, the sandals of the gospel peace, you know, the faithful sword, the, you know, all of it, the helmet of salvation, like having it all on you is so important because this is what helps you cast doubt the second you feel it. It helps you resist the devil so that he flees from you. Once you know God who is, <clears throat> once you know who God is, you know nothing is impossible. So pray, pray with an expectant heart, knowing God has gone before you. He hears you and will answer you. His grace and mercies are sufficient to get you through this lifetime and the next. He will never fail us. We will never fail. Let God build your church from the ground up in Jesus' name. Be a vessel. And he will make your direction clear. If you would just empty yourself and submit unto him, 
and to the Holy Ghost within you, directing you and quieting your stresses and worries and really casting them out and saying this is not of god the word says you do not bring me fear you do not want me anxious so therefore i know this is the enemy and myself replaying things that are not of you god let me dive myself so that i might not be manipulated by the enemy you know he put every gift every talent in you let him use you he will glorify you as it brings him glory to see you do well in life he delights in you he loves to see us blessed and successful in jesus name let us pursue him for the impossible those deep desires those deep talents those things you know you know what this is only god given and every time you pursue it it just Go seamlessly, but sometimes you just start to doubt because it's going too well. You know, it's not only about things going bad. Sometimes things go too well that you start to feel like uh, something's about to happen. Cast those fears out and say, God, this is not of you. I rebuke the enemy. I rebuke the spirit of fear. And I pull up grace. I pull up mercy. I pull up your joy, your patience, your resilience, Lord. I resist the enemy in this moment. Lay your life down if you need to daily and say, God, less of you and more, less of me, more of you. And his Spirit, Holy Spirit will help you in all things at all times. Like that Holy Ghost lives with you in your body, in your soul, in your mind to effectively help you with everything you're faced with and challenged with within your own spirit. Be faithful and expectant. Call on his spirit in you to help you with your faithfulness. Holy Spirit, help me. And he will. Holy Spirit, help me with my faithfulness unto God. What are things that help us build up faithfulness towards God? Submission, fasting, prayer, checking our heart's motives when making requests known to God. Like what is motivating your ask? introspection is crucial to repentance we are not perfect nor does god expect us to be we need him to perfect us with the holy spirit at work within us we go through different seasons with god initially he brings things into our lives so that we can grow knowing that he's right beside us these things feel as natural processes like oh i'm ending this season entering the next leaving this job ending a friendship but you know, they're not devastating or gut-wrenching in a way that you're not relying on God to get you through it. This can mean your faith is really high because God is trying to show you his power and he is trying to have you recognize him in a way that he establishes all things in you, even your desires, you know. But as we mature, it moves from that childlike faith that could just trust a parent as to a mature Christ relationship where trouble comes and you can almost see it on the horizon and you don't know how you're going to stop it but now you're tested to see how faithful you really are to the God who's brought you through everything as a child are you still childlike in your submission to him even though you have big problems um you petition him more you lay down your life more Will you choose him or will you choose your own desires? What's more important? I know in the panic of life, we tend to go to our protective state first. But why not choose that protective state to remain in him? Why not choose him and say, God, you know, this is horrible, but you've always protected me. And go back to the memory we discussed last week, remembering who he's always been to you. So that you can be faithfully expectant that he'll see you through and that this chapter is the one you're supposed to be walking as blessed as it feels, as scary as you don't know where you're going to, but you can see you're going. He will be there. What does God say about laying our own desires down and how he gives life to those who do? This is always where we check our hearts to see if we're really pursuing God, his will, and promises or our own. His promises do not justify our disobedience. No matter what he's promised, 
it doesn't mean because he's given you a promise that you can be disobedient because he must still fulfill. No, no, no. It's a partnership. You go together. Are we faithfully expectant of what we want or are we faithfully expecting to what God says he'll do and what his promises and his gifts are and what his will is for us? Are we aligned with the will of God or we're living separately from that will and wanting what we want and feeling frustrated when it doesn't go well? Or when it goes well, do we run away from God and then only when it's bad again, do we go back to him? What is your faithfulness looking like towards God? And I think the faithful expectation really is that your will will be done, Lord, and that, God, I want what you want for me and I don't want anything else. God, I see the areas of my life where there's always your aid, your windows open, your doors open, and I resist it. Please forgive me. Help me to walk in it more. And when I'm in it, Lord, to trust that you'll see me through, even though I can't see it yet. God is such a wonderful God that he would never leave you. He would never take you somewhere without having a full and complete plan for how to navigate that. Faithful expectation comes from building up our faith through prayer, through fasting, through the word. And they all go in concert. God does not want us to be two-minded. I think it's James 1.16 that says that. Like, It's pointless to be to mind it because he won't answer you because already you trust the world more than you trust him and god has told us he's a jealous god (laughs) he wants our full devotion and full attention and i think it's so important just to submit your ways unto him he's an awesome god and believe in the impossible because why not why not i'd like to take this time to pray today and just say I hope you know that the silver lining in life is really that you can't expect the impossible impossible, because you've seen it before. There's Everyone has a story where they didn't think something would happen and it did. God's hand is always over you. It's over every part of you. And the good news in the now is that there's still time. There's still time to be the very best version of his daughter or son. There's still time to ask him to help you build faith. There's still time to cast the spirit of fear out, to cast the devil away from you. There's still time and God dictates that time. So he will always wait on you, you know, and man, he's just such a good God. I'd like to take this time to pray. God, as we've gone into this week and we might have gone through really high highs and felt in moments oh my gosh is this really my life or really low lows and be like i can't believe this is my life lord whatever we felt we know your hand is on us and we can believe for the impossible lord because there are no limits to your wonderful wonderful kingdom and your wonderful ways lord there is no god like you on heaven on earth you accomplish with your word and what you've said with your mouth mighty god And you fulfill it with your hand over our lives. And we're so grateful. You've given us Christ. You've given us Holy Spirit to have access to you, Lord. Those are the impossibles that we could even pray to you now that you would know our hearts. Lord, less of me and more of you. Fill me up with your spirit so I may want what you want for me. Lord, as I go into my next week, there are things I'm trusting and believing you for. And I know there are others there too, believing that this is where you want them to go. This is the impossible. Lord, I pray that you would cast out the spirit of doubt within us. You would cast out every demon trying to manipulate our minds in the name of Jesus by the blood that was shed for us, Lord. In Jesus' name, Lord, that you would use the name above all names, mighty God, your name, Lord, to cast any spirit that does not belong to us or to you, Lord, that tries to overshadow the glory of your kingdom and the light of your ways, Lord. We cast it out by the blood of Jesus, Lord, and we stand firm in faith, Lord. We will not be like the disciples on the boat, Lord, worried. Lord, you make the ocean still. So we trust in you to do so now, mighty God, that the things we're believing for in the week to come, Lord, that they are done, Lord. And we glorify your name and say, thank you, Yahweh. Thank you, Jireh, that you would make all things possible. 
according to your will if we would believe that we received it. Lord, we pray that we have a forgiving nature in our day-to-day, that we are not easily offended, that we do not block our own blessings by not living out the fruits of your Spirit, Lord. We pray that we act, Lord, with joy, kindness, goodness always, with self-control and discipline, that we bring all things to you and that we would cry out unto you and the Holy Spirit within us, in Jesus' name, mighty God, that you would help us when we are weak and you would be our strength, for your word says you are. So, Lord, we lay our lives down unto you. We submit all things, trusting in your completion over our lives. And in your mighty name, we say, thank you, God. Thank you that you would say yes. Thank you, God, that you would love us. Thank you, God, for all things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Guys, thank you for listening in. And we pray that you have a wonderful, wonderful day. And that's the good news for now. Thank you. Bye.